hello fellow aspirants this is me dr jagdeep jagdeep and in today's podcast we'll be discussing land reforms in india after independence so first there are two kinds of land reforms like we can divide them chronologically for the sake of convenience first are the institutional reforms these reforms are in the institutions of india that is social economic and political we can roughly categorize them from like 1947 to 1960 but even they continued later on also secondly we have technological reforms and those occurred before 1960 also but majorly they occurred after 1960 in the institutional reforms we have abolition of zamindari tenants reforms ceilings on land holding and cooperativeization of agriculture in the subsequent slides subsequent slides we we'll learn about about each of them in detail and in the technological side we have the beloved green revolution moving ahead let us first focus upon the abolition of zamindari so here we have this famous thakur of shole he was a zamindar so in uttar pradesh a committee was appointed under the chairmanship of govind ballabh pant and this report served as a blueprint for all the other states to implement land reforms the constitutional amendment was added like was done and ninth schedule was added but a major challenge was the absence of land records a good thing which came out of this land reforms was the 20 million tenants become land owners now this is something really revolutionary because in most countries for this to happen there had to be a revolution but india was one of the few countries where democratically such reforms took place the zamindars were paid some compensation but it was very small and in some states like kashmir no compensation was paid at all now kashmir is a very good case where land reforms were very successfully implemented other than kashmir in kerala and west bengal the land reforms were much successful even in punjab very less compensation was paid to the zamindars the challenges which the government faced for abolition of zamindari were first and foremost was the concept of land under personal cultivation this means that the land which was under personal cultivation of the zamindars was exempt from confiscation so they tried to show lot of land under their own personal cultivation secondly they created legal hurdles that for everything they used to go to the high court and supreme court and thus slow down the process of abolition of zamindari thirdly they had a few friends and uh, well wishers in the legislatures that lok sabha or with the vidhan sabhas and they tried to scuttle the land reforms finally when in the implementation part the lower level revenue officials were in collusion with the zamindars and they delayed the land reforms moving ahead let us go to tenancy reforms there are three aims of tenancy reforms first that is there should be security of tenure to the tenant secondly his rent should be reduced and it should be fair and third the ultimate goal is transfer ship of ownership like transfer of ownership from the tenant sorry from the zamindar or the land owner to the tenant who is actually tilling the soil this concept is called as soil to the land to the tiller now we have something called as operation barga which occurred in 1977 in west bengal it was one of the most famous examples and most successful examples of transfer of land from to the tenants here the land ownership was transferred to share croppers also called as burgardars that is why this operation was called as operation barga by 1990 almost 1.4 million titles were given now this is really phenomenal 
this was achieved by mobilizing targeted beneficiaries like those who were to benefited those were targeted and made aware of the operation burga the crop division in case of tenants was 1 is to 3 like suppose uh, i grown around uh, like 120 120 kg of wheat from this 30 kg will go to the land owner and uh, 90 kg will go to the tiller or the tenant then these tenancy rights were made permanent that no owner could throw away his tenant away like evict his tenant and heritable even children could inherit the occupancy rights so like for all practical purposes they were paid made permanent owners the issues which operation burger faced was the problem of small land owners because they, these small land owners were themselves very poor and like they had to keep tenants because the lands were very far away and that is why these tenancy laws would in some way harm these small land owners then we had multiple burgadars or share coppers on the same land some land owners used to give the same land in one season to person a and in the next season to person b now if the government has to make someone owner of this land now both a and b are tenants now if the government wants to make someone the owner like whom will it make a and b both have equal rights because six months he works six months he works so if the di- government divides this land then this becomes an uneconomic holding that it is very small to cultivate so this was a major issue thank you guys the remaining parts will soon come i will request you to please like share and subscribe this to help sustain this initiative we'll see you soon with the next like the next part of this podcast thank you keep studying